All right. Hello and welcome to the uh, sixth episode of It Has a Certain Sound. What a bing, what a bang. And uh, yeah, today we're going to be talking about a man named Ted Lucas and his uh, self titled record. Stick around, we'll be right back. Hey, listen, remember to like. Comment and subscribe for more content. Yeah. Oh. So, this record uh, to me is really, really interesting. I think that there's a lot of like, um, like, so, so Ted Lucas comes from this psych rock band. Um, let me look it up because I actually don't remember. Oh. He comes from this uh, this psych rock band. I think it's the Spike Drivers. I think I'm pretty sure it's the Spike Drivers, and um, and they were around in like '66, I think it was, and uh, and I don't know. Something happened with it. I think they released a few singles, but it, nothing really like went through with it. And um, but it's supposed to be like one of the first psych rock bands from from like Detroit. I think it's Detroit, and. Um, and so, so he was like, Ted Lucas was a person that was, I think, uh, during that time in that music scene, he was, he was well known, um, at least by the people in the scene. And also he was doing a lot of studio work too. Um, I don't, I don't know what stuff he was in. Um, oh man, I think he was in, I think he was in stacks or no, I think he was in Motown. I think he was he played sitar on the Motown records in like the seventies. I think that's what it is. Um, I'm I'm pretty sure. I'm not gonna look it up though, so don't take my word for it. Um, <laughs> he released this record um, in seventy five, and I th- I'm I think he he pretty much had a he had a lot to do with it. I think because there's no there's no drums on it. Except for the second side, there's no drums on the first side, and it's a lot of guitars, and I think there's one or two songs that have bass on them, but they're very, very low in the mix. And he's creating, he's creating these songs with, with the guitars, and what I think is really interesting uh, about, about his background and the connection to this record is that this record, to me, feels a lot like, a, like it's very like psychedelic, you know, because there's a lot of like very airy atmospheric textures going on that he's doing with uh with the guitar and um and with the with the chords with the harmonies with the melodies it's all it's very airy and um and that kind of just to me gives it like a like a bit of a psychedelic feel i guess and um and then it's also the first side is very very poppy the first side is like like a uh, folk pop and um and it's and it's like a psychedelic a uh, uh, folk pop record on the first side and then the second side I think the second side is really interesting I think the the first side is a lot easier to listen to and I think it's it's the thing to to get into it with this record and um because the second side is a lot of jamming and it's very very like it's very guitar jammy you know it's like like specifically guitar jammy so like if you don't like listening to, to guitar stuff or you're not so used to listening to guitar stuff, I think it would be harder to listen to the second side. Um, I think the second side is interesting. I think the first song is cool. I like it. Um, the The second song on it is, uh, is a blues. And that one, that one, I just think that uh, for me, my personal taste, I think it's a little bit long. Um, but it's very jammy. It's, it's a, it's a blues that he's playing. And it, the cool thing about that song is that he's playing like, uh, like he's, he's hitting the, the guitar and he's making like a, like a, like a bass on the one and the three. And he's kind of like smacking the guitar with maybe like a ring or something or just his finger maybe. And that's like, like a snare hit. So there's like a bass snare hit on it, but it's him playing all of it. The last song on the, on the second side though, is like, there's a, it's a, a tempura. And that's being played, and that's kind of like a droney. It's like a sitar sound, but it's like just, just, uh, just the note of the. Usually, I think it's just the note of the scale, and then it's like a, like a third or a fifth, 
And so there's just somebody kind of just droning in the back. And then he's playing guitar over that. And, and the guitar sounds really, really good on that. It sounds very old. It sounds like it fits really, really well. And he has the guitar tuned. It's like tuned down. So it's instead of being an E standard, it's tuned a whole note down, a whole step down into D standard. And that makes it sound a lot more bassy and a lot more like uh, like like ringy almost it's like uh like it fills up it fills up the air differently than than like a, a normal a normal guitar uh like the normal guitar frequency range would sit so so it's really interesting to listen to for that and then and then it just it sounds like it fits with the with the the droning it really does and and i think that that's really cool about it because i mean it just sounds it sounds unique but it, it still sounds very very like uh like it still sounds old you know it still sounds old and and i think is that's kind of what he was trying to do with it which is really really cool so the first side the first side is is my favorite i think that that's the the best way to get into the record because because it's just it's 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 pop music it's pop music and it's and it's very very catchy and they're short songs and they're 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 comfortable to listen to i think that there's there's kind of like an uneasiness in the music, I think, because it sounds very beautiful and it sounds almost like mystical, like, um, I don't know, kind of like magical foresty. Like it sounds like, uh, it sounds like, uh, I don't know, like you went into a forest with hobbits, you know, like <laughs> they, he kind of gives that vibe off to me. It's in the folkiness of it, but then the pop, the pop sensibility and the way that the the guitar com comes off as like a texture and the way that the harmonies come off like a texture because the harmonies are doing their own thing and they're making it like um like they're almost turning the voice into like uh, the voice kind of almost sounds like a little bit droney you know like the voice gets doubled and then it goes into these harmonies and then it goes back into the doubling so it's like it, it puts this emphasis on when when there's a change and usually it won't be like in another octave it's not like it's not like it's taking up another frequency range it's like it's all sitting in the same range together and and it sounds very it sounds very beautiful it sounds very like um it's almost a little bit dissonant which kind of makes it ring in your ear and it, it like I don't know it's just there's a lot of meaning in the harmonies I think I think they they carry the song a lot I think the harmonies are, are kind of what makes it sound like strange like almost mystical in that way yeah and the the music the music kind of feels um it feels comforting in a way just because of just because of how it fills up the air you know it's like it, the the record almost it feels like like very sparse but at the same time everything's being filled up it's like there's no there's no really space like being left it's all being filled up you know it's not like it's not it's not as percussive it's very it's very um like strings ringing out but with uh with a lot of guitars the uh the second song on the record it's so easy when you know what you're doing. That song to me, I really, really like it. I really, really like that song. I like, I like all the songs on the first side. I think that the, the, the magnum opus on this record. Uh, it's so nice to get stoned. That one is. That one's really, really good. I'll talk about that one a little bit later. But the second song, it feels like a childlike, um, like nursery rhyme-ish in a way. And I think it's really, really interesting. I think that the the whole record kind of has like this, this like uh, this childlike, almost like a like a childish almost wonder to it. I don't know if that makes sense, but I, I that's kind of like like I feel that in the music. I feel that there's like a like a it's like a child getting these things out. You know, even though I mean he's a grown man, especially at, at this point. You know, he's he's like I think. I think he's in his early 30s or late 20s. He's a grown man at this point. But there's like this childlike sensibility to it on on a song like it's so easy when you know what you're doing makes it almost feel like you're in a like you're in a nursery room and it's like a like a jingle that's kind of like bouncing around like carousel style around the room and it's just it's just really really interesting. You know, and and there's also a bit of a circus vibe to it. You know, and and I think that I think that with the song being what it is, it's so easy when you know what you're doing. 
the the circus vibe is is really cool because you know it's so easy when you know when you know what you're doing kind of implies this like like a childlike wonder and like exploration you know like there's exploration involved with that it's so easy when you know what you're doing you have to you have to do something to to end up knowing what you're doing you know and that's kind of the point it's so easy when you know what you're doing it's so easy when you know how it's like it's so easy once you spend the time doing it and then once you're doing it you know it's an easy thing now you know because you spent the time learning how to do it once you know how to do it it's easy and so the childlike wonder that comes through on that, I think, is really, really cool, especially coming from a, a song perspective. You know, it's so easy. Like, like it, it feels like he's writing that about the song, you know, like he's like, oh, I know this is a good song. I know this is a beautiful song. It's so easy when you know what you're doing. It feels like it applies towards the song as well. And it kind of it kind of puts into it, you know, like there's still like this childlike aspect to him even now when he's playing like guitar, when he's playing his instrument and he's making music, you know, there's still that like childlikeness to it. Where, where you're exploring and you're discovering and you're, you're excited to go and explore and discover and be in places you've never been before, you know, and, and, and be uncomfortable and, and, and grow through things. Now that I know is the one that has the, the circus feel to it, um, now that I know kind of bounces around, and also the, that's the one with the bass in it, and, and it kind of has like this country feel, but it's very like, it's very, it's very minimal, you know, it's like it's guitars, I think there's a mandolin, and um and there's bass and it feels very it's it feels very country but without being without being so so i don't know country to me sounds sounds uh bigger than what this sounds like this just kind of sounds like like i don't know folky you know people just a few people getting together and kind of doing this and um and that one it's funny like while i was listening to it i really like mark twain and i really really like the book huckleberry finn and this kind of reminded me of the same the same kind of feeling in the atmosphere of 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 Mark Twain's writing with Huckleberry Finn and which I thought I thought was really really interesting um because there's almost like there's almost a little bit of like sarcasm in it uh in this song you know and and Mark Twain the way that he writes there's a lot of sarcasm in in how he writes and so it's really funny to see the uh to see to see both of them kind of have the same feel and then kind of have a little bit of sarcasm involved in it you know now that I know the time that I've wasted you know, it's like, it's like, okay, yeah, yeah, I spent all this time doing things that, that I shouldn't have done, maybe, or maybe it's just, you know, I spent all this time doing something that ended up not being what I wanted to do, and, uh, and now I'm moving on from it, you know, it's like, it's like, there, he points out, you know, all this time that I've wasted, it, it almost sounds like it's, it sounds like it's a lot, you know, and then says, you know, oh, whatever, no use in, no use in sitting around and, and, and just being stuck in this. Yeah, there's that kind of sarcasm. I, I think that's kind of where I felt the the same vibe it was kind of like that sarcastic feel and that kind of countryish feel where it's you know it feels like a little bit southern yeah i like i like the the fact that the the songs on this side are short you know like they're they're pop songs and i think that they're done really really well and i think that they're done very uniquely and that's what i think is so cool about it because because these are very beautiful songs and i almost feel like like i should have heard things like this before but but i don't really I don't really hear this being replicated, you know, like this is this is its own thing. And for it to sound so good and to be so minimal and so stripped down and so beautiful and still be so unique, I think is really, really interesting. The only other person that comes to mind for me when when I hear this is uh, Jack Johnson, uh, the banana pancakes guy. He's got a, a stripped down sound, uh, an acoustic stripped down sound that that does remind me of this. And I think his use of like chords and harmony is is very similar. And and even like the voice is kind of like a little bit almost like breathy. And I think that Ted Lucas is his voice is deep and it's and it's a little bit breathy. Um, just in the way that he he does a thing where he goes up and down and his voice doesn't have a lot of vibrato on it. But it's like it kind of blossoms up and then comes down like the volume that he uses. And, and that's like where the breathiness of it comes through a little bit. But Jack Johnson doesn't do that the way that he does it, which I really like the way that Ted Lucas does it. And then Jack Johnson also like the harmonies are not like these harmonies are very, very strange. Like they're they they have like a mystical quality to them, you know, like a, a magical forest kind of quality, like a, like as if a mushroom was singing, like if a mushroom was singing, I think that it would make harmonies like Ted Lucas. That's kind of, that's kind of, I think the best way for me to put that. I think that that puts it where I, I think that it sits, <laughs> you know, it's like mushroom harmonies. That's what Ted Lucas does. And yeah, it's just, it's really interesting, you know, because he did it, he did it all in just a, a few minutes, you know, two or three minutes. 
and and it feels like a like a place that you can sit in especially the first side like when i bought this record which um which these are like i, I have a reissue and um i think the re reissue came out in like 2015 or 2017 or something and i really like the reissue i think it sounds really good it's on colored vinyl I don't like colored vinyl. I think it's hard to see the separation of the songs with colored vinyl. But it looks really, really cool. And then you get to say that it's colored vinyl. It's colored vinyl. I bought your colored vinyl. And um, I really like this one because it comes with like a... It's like a... Like it comes with a, a sheet that has a bunch of stuff written down on... on on the stuff that they, on the, the music and, and extra tapes that they found and like who Ted Lucas was and like the end of his life. It was a guy who wrote it. I think his name was like Mike Dukempfi or something. And he lives in Detroit and he, he's super into like, I think he's really into soul. Yeah. Like 60s soul, I think like Detroit soul. And he knew about this record and he actually got together with, uh, with the Ted Lucas's family and he got the chance to go through a, a lot of, I think he, because I spoke to him uh, via Instagram. And uh, and we talked a little bit about all this stuff. And we were talking about the fact that um, he was saying that Ted Lucas had a lot of extra tapes. And there's one song that Ted Lucas has on, it's a, it's on YouTube. And I'll put the link in, in the, I'll put the link in the description below. It's incredible. It's a live acoustic thing that he does. And he's by himself. and uh, And he's sitting cross-legged. And, and it's this like, uh, it's this like hypnotic bass line that he's playing and he's also improvising, uh, finger picking and he never misses a beat. He never misses a beat on the entire thing. He's like, he's just, he's playing beautifully. And then he goes into this beautiful song and it's called Love Took a New Twist, I think. And, and it's like the transitions, the way that he goes through the whole thing, it's this beautiful experience that he puts together. And uh, Mike told me that there's a lot more stuff like that that he has. And, and I, I thought I love like the second side is is I like the second side because I really like Ted Lucas as a folk guitar player. I like that live uh, uh, song that he does with that. I'm going to I'm going to post or I'm going to tag in the uh, in the description. That's my favorite like solo thing that I heard him do. I just I, I thought it was incredible. You know, it's like uh, like just the way that he was able to play all these things by himself and like have this this cohesive like improvisation that he put together. And I love improvisation, too. You know, that's that's one thing that I really appreciate in music is the improvisational aspect of all of it. And, and a lot of the music that I do end up liking has a lot of improvisation in it. And um, but I've been listening to a lot more stuff recently. And this this doesn't have so much improvisation on the first side. The first side is more, like I said, pop. And it, it does it does that thing really, really well, where it's these songs and they're, they're beautifully arranged songs and they sound really, really good. He, Mike said that uh, that there's there's a lot more stuff. And it's just the I think he said it's that the record label won't release it. I don't know why. Um, and, it, and that kind of, that kind of bums me out, but, but it's cool, you know, um, this record, I think, I think really, really stands on its own. And yeah, like I was saying, the, uh, that live performance that I saw made me appreciate the second side more before I didn't like the second side so much. I really liked the first side and that's kind of the reason why I bought the record was just to listen to the first side and I would just play it on repeat over and over again. Uh, I really, really liked it a lot. I liked his use of harmonies. I liked the way that it made the, the songs feel very, you know, made them feel magical. Ooh. Ooh. I'll Find A Way is is very, very floaty. And that one, that one moves around like, uh, the the harmonies on that one kind of almost make it feel like a, like a little bit orchestral. And that one's a lot of fun to listen to. I like that one a lot. Um, it's So Nice To Get Stoned is, that's the best track on the on the record that one is so good it's so nice to get stoned feels like you're taking a breath of fresh air you're like ah, it is so nice so to nice get stoned. stoned the harmonies to me i kind of was thinking about them and i was thinking that they sound a lot like um like it almost sounds like you're singing into a cave and the cave is like it's a really deep cave and it's echoing back at you and by the time it echoes back to you it's like it, the 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 pitch has changed just a little bit on the voice. It's like just maybe like a note, you know, it's just like one one note down in the scale where it has to be, you know, it's like it's it's really interesting harmonies. It's interesting intervals. That's what it feels like to me. It's just like a little bit of a pitch shift of a pitch shift. And um, and because of it, there's like a little bit of dissonance. 
And it almost gives it the sense to me. It gave it almost like the sense of like the like I got the echoey feel off of it. And I was almost like, oh, it kind of feels like you're you're sitting like you're just taking a deep breath and you're sitting in a field on the grass and, and you're just kind of like thinking to yourself. You have thoughts echoing in your head, you know. And they're just kind of echoing back at you and they're a little bit distorted and you're just kind of enjoying, you know, you're just enjoying being sitting out there stoned, of course. And um, and just, you know, listening to the breeze, just listening to the breeze. I will also say that like the second side, it's it's all live, which is really, really cool about it. You know, like there's there's three live performances and it's like you get the chance to hear um what it might have sounded like if you went to a, a, a Ted Lucas like kind of like solo solo performance, you know, and and I think that that's really cool because because it's just if you get really into the record and you listen to the second side, it's like it it, it feels special, you know. It feels like like you're getting to witness something that that you may have missed out on. For me, you know, I missed out on it. Obviously, I wasn't around when he was doing these things, and I think he ended up dying like in the '90s or something. Um, and he wasn't, he wasn't that old and, and he didn't do, he didn't do too much after this. You know, I think, I think he had kind of a, like, like the, the last part of his life was, was kind of sad from what I remember reading about it. But, um, but Hey, he made great music, you know, made great music. All right, guys, this is the record. Ooh. Pretty cool cover. Um, <laughs> this is actually a cover that was made by the the guy that did the Journey covers. Did this one, and um, Ted Lucas. I think I re I read a story somewhere that it was something like Ted Lucas asked him if he could use the the design, and it might have been before Journey came out with the the first record that had kind of like that Scarab Beetle art on it, and he asked to use it and. And the, the artist that made the artwork was like, no, no, I'm saving this for something. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with it yet. And he ended up convincing him to let him use it on the uh, on the cover. I think it's a cool I think it's a cool cover. I don't think it matches the record so much, though. And um, I definitely associate it with with Journey. You know, that's the first place that I saw it. So so it's kind of it's kind of weird to see it on the Ted Lucas record. You know, it almost feels like it doesn't fit. But um but I think it's an interesting story behind it. This is the record. This is... So you guys can see. That's Ted Lucas. And uh, if you see the live video of him, <laughs> I don't think that... I, I don't know. I don't think that that's what he looked like all the time. Uh, the live video is cool. It's a lot of fun. It's that the live video is a lot of fun. It's really interesting to see because it's just some, it's some some weird guy that's just sitting there cross-legged like a yogi. And uh, and he's just playing guitar by himself, and he's you know he's just he's just in his head, you know, just playing music, and and you're you're like watching it happen. So very very cool. I like this record a lot. This record is one that I listen to a lot, a lot like the Towns Van Zandt, you know. I heard this and and it really piqued my interest with songwriting, you know, like I wasn't I wasn't as interested in songwriting before this because this was this was interesting to me. But yeah, uh make sure you guys like, comment and subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next episode. Hit it, James. Hit it. Hit it. Oh.